We're recording, Chair. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the development control meeting. On Thursday, the 21st of January, 2021. Right. Can I welcome our members and officers to this meeting of the Democratic Control Committee, which is due to the government's advice to practice social distancing will be end virtually. The meeting is being recorded and will be available via the Council's website to be viewed as soon as is possible following the meeting. Everyone participating in this meeting will be accessing this meeting from the remote locations. Please could everyone ensure that their mobile phones are switched off or to silent mode. Members would receive electronic copy of the agenda. I will ask officers to present a summary of the key points. For the record, the agenda can be viewed on the Council's website. Members and officers and any public speakers will be speaking at various points during the meeting. And those speaking may switch up the cameras at this point. But I would ask that with accepting myself as a chairperson at all other times, you keep your cameras and microphones switched off. This will help to minimize any background noise and interference to ensure the connection remains as stable as possible. If any members and officers which should raise a point or a question, they should pre press the hands button icon on the right hand side of the screen on the Microsoft Teams window and I will come to an order I receive the request. Please do not use your microphones and tell the invited to do so. Please do not use the chat button as on Teams, we cannot clear any text on the meeting recording, as we could when we were previously using Skype for meetings. Please also lower your hand once we finish speaking. In the event that the committee requires to vote an item before it is at the meeting, the Democratic Service Officer will ask you in turn to announce your vote, either for, against or abstain. I will, then, I will then ask the committee's legal officer to announce the decision made by the committee following this procedure. Officers from the Democratic Services will be supporting the meeting and will be monitoring the use of microphones throughout the meeting. And when necessary, we will mute those not being used. Before, me, before we formally commence, I will ask the officer from the Democratic Services to announce the names of the councillors in attendance at this meeting. I will also ask the officers and any public speakers to introduce themselves as when I invite them to speak during the course of the meeting. They too should ensure microphones and cameras are switched off when not in use. Andrew, can you announce the members of your day, please? Yes, thank you, Chair. Good afternoon, uh, everyone. For the benefit of the recording, my name is Andrew Rees, Democratic Services Manager. On the call with me today is my colleague Mark Galvin, Senior Democratic Services Officer Committees, who is minuting this afternoon's meeting. The members in attendance are of the committee today are Councillor Hussain, Councillor Amanda Williams, Councillor Webster, Councillor Keith Edwards, Councillor David Lewis, um, yourself, Chair, Councillor Gary Thomas, Councillor Ratcliffe, Councillor Janice Lewis, Councillor John Paul Blundell, Mr Mayor, Councillor Ken Watts, Councillor Matthew Voisey, Councillor Kern, Councillor Collins, Councillor Granville and Councillor Dendy and Councillor Spanswick. And I believe Councillor Alex Williams is about to come into the meeting as well. Yes, he's here. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Good afternoon, Alex. Right, on the agenda, item one. Are we got any apologies, please? Councillor Bosi, need to leave half past three. Okay. Any declarations of interest, please? Sorry, can I go back? I raised a hand for the apologies for absence. Right away. I Monday. need I need to leave a quarter to three because I have to take my son to a medical appointment. Sorry. No problem. John Paul, please. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Uh, Chair. Uh, just double checking, but yeah, Councillor Stuart Baldwin sends his apologies. He's thank still. you. Councillor Lewis, please. Um, 
sorry, I thought we were on uh, item two. No, not yet, no. Item two, declarations of interest for members and officers. I got to declare on item seven and item eight. Item seven is P slash 220 slash 552 slash RLX. Item eight, P20 slash 553 slash FEW. And I'll be speaking. Thank you. What about approval of the minister? Any other declarations? Yeah. Yes. Sorry, I must apologise. Any background interference? We are doing emergency child minding. <laughs> but um, so, if I could put forward apologies, both uh, both myself and Janice, they are the same uh, ones. They personal interest because we are both members of St Bride's Minor Community Council but take no part in planning discussions or decisions. And also, um, Janice is the, the Community Council represented, representative sorry, on the Coiti Valia Conservatives, and I'm the BCBC representative for Thank you, the David. Conservatives. Thank you. Thanks very much. Where's my talk? I know it's something else. Councillor Bosey, you would put your hand up? Yeah, ju just very quickly, um, Chair, and the question is, with so many declarations of interest and uh, potential members not uh, being here for the full meeting, um, we, we, what, what is the actual level for quorancy for this, this, this meeting, please? Because it, it could pose a problem. Mark, I'll uh, it, please. Well, I can answer that, Chair. It's uh, it's fifty percent of the uh, membership. So it's eight, then, is it? Uh, what, what's, perhaps Andrew can confirm the current membership. Is it eighteen or? Sorry, Andrew. Andrew got his mic off. Yeah, I've got just got my microphone back on now. Uh, yes, the the current membership is eighteen. So the the quorum is nine. Nine. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Right. What about declarations of interest? Right. Could I have approval of minutes, please? From the Formally moved, work. Chair. Thank you very much. Second? I'll second them, Chair. All in favour? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Public speakers. Well, I said I'm going to speak, so... Alex, please? No, well, not yet, Chair. We, um, it's, this is just... This, to, you, List has been circulated of who the public right. speakers are. I know. And uh, have a mover for the men addendum amendment sheet, please. I'll form the second. Move that chair. Second. Second. Yeah. Second. All in favour? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Right. So I got to speak on number seven. On number eight. Are you, going to, are you going to speak on item seven, or um, or are you well, going to save it till item eight? Well, eight it is, five or three, isn't it? Yeah, so I think you, as you've declared the prejudicial interest, Chair, you've got to leave the meeting now and the Vice Chair will take item seven. All right, Dan. And you'll be called back to speak on item eight in yes. due course. Uh, no problem, I'll, my I'll neighbor. I'll the list of who's putting their hands up to speak. No, not yet, because we no. haven't got to the meeting yet. I haven't got to the... Um... Right, Andrew, you're going to shut me down? I'll leave it on and I'm going to leave the other, other room, all right? I'll uh, just remove you from the meeting now, Chair. Thank you. So, thank you. So I can confirm members that Chair, Councillor Thomas has left the meeting. OK. Uh, so it's uh, Councillor Glanville in the chair now. And we, I think the first speaker on item seven, uh, Councillor, is Councillor Alex Williams. If he can, he if he can speak for three minutes. Okay, thank you. Can you hear me, Councillor Granville? Yes, I can. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Chair. Um, and thank you for inviting me to speak on this matter. With regards to this application, I would just like to underline that I've never owned a field adjacent to this facility and have no idea where these comments have come from. So I have no conflict of interest whatsoever in speaking on this application. 
Uh, as you will have seen from my written remarks, my extensive written remarks and those of my constituents, the site is in close proximity to the community of Healer Q, which I represent. And I would strongly encourage all members of the committee to insist upon the opportunity to undertake a site visit before coming to a decision on these applications. I would therefore respectfully suggest that any decision on this application is deferred to allow members to do this. As you will see from my remarks, I attended a site visit on the 1st of October. I was disappointed that the uh, applicants, uh, the, that the applicants um, and their written remarks and the history of non-compliance they suggested that uh, they would withdraw their contracts from Kia and uh, BCBC. Uh, the site has a history, a long history of non-compliance, maladministration. Um, sorry, I've lost my space. The history has a um, long history of non-compliance and maladministration and negligence. There's been no effort to comply with current planning restrictions and NRW regulations. They have been responsible for many of the breaches of current conditions and enforcement notices, and it's simply not acceptable that the restrictions are simply changed because they're unable to comply. There's been a flagrant disregard for planning control, environmental permits, and as a result, a number of fire incidents have occurred. There is a great deal of scepticism within the community about the management of this site. The site boundaries are not very well defined at present. Additional landscaping and tree planting is required, and there ought to be a commitment that the boundary to the site will be repaired and maintained. Given the traffic movements through the village of Helaku, the opinions of residents of Mount Pleasant, the bungalow and other residents in the vicinity should be a material consideration. The seven metre wood piles will completely overwhelm this bungalow, preventing light and visual amenity. Given the applicant's assurance that there will be no increase in throughput, I question why the applicant is seeking to change the height of the stockpiles. The applicant indicates the pre-selected wood would be brought to the site. I believe this would be hazardous and it's essential that conditions are placed on the applicant. It is also my view that any unassessed wood should be stored in a dedicated quarantined area. The applicant does not intend to increase historic levels of production at the site, so it shouldn't have any objection for a condition to be set on annual throughput. I also believe that a condition should be set on the length of time that waste wood will be stored at the site. There have been a number of occasions whereby vehicles have left the highway, injuring pedestrians. This raises questions about the suitability of the highway for such HGVs. It says the applicant has no intention to increase traffic movements, so will it submit to a, plan a condition of planning approval? The applicant fails to address the pollution and environmental concerns. A drainage plan should be a condition of planning consent, and there should be a condition placed on the applicant that it would undertake dust suppression. And that's the time, Chairman. Thank you for that. Um... Right, we'll now go on to, um, you said that the chair was going to speak in the next one, Rod, didn't you? Yeah, he's not speaking in this one, Chair. It's it's Lucy Binney, Land and Mineral Management is for the applicant now, Chair. Right. Lucy, please. Can you come in now, please? Can you come in now, please? Can you hear me? Yes. Hello? Yes. Hi. Um, Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair Member. Shall, shall I just start? Yes. Um, yeah, I'm speaking on behalf of uh, South West Wood uh, and I'm reading your officer's report and can actually see it's, it's quite comprehensive covering a lot of issues, so I'm not quite sure what I can say sort of further to that. But South West Wood Products have asked me to say that they, they do very much appreciate the concerns of the local community, noting the previous site operator's track record and I think it is very difficult to separate out the issues from South Wales Wood and the applicant South West Wood. But they are a different company and quite honestly I don't think uh, they would be here if they had operated as South Wales Wood has done. They've been uh, established for well over a decade yeah, yeah. and have a number of sites across South Wales they, have, uh, they are affiliated to other wood recyclers uh, and this, this does divide back if there's something wrong on the site. Can I pick your car? Can I pick your car? I hope you can hear me. I can hear background. I hope you can hear me. Uh, so uh, one of the particular contracts that they have in terms of their wood uh, is the Margam contract and I think the wood contracts are quite an important thing in demonstrating how they can sort of address the wood. But as I said, 
we can understand with the previous operator how it's gone and the site people will want to see it gone probably but the site does have a valid planning permission for wood recycling and it is well located relative to margam and your officer's recommendation there are additional conditions over and above the existing permission which include the likes of the uh output limit that Councillor Williams mentioned and also other matters in relation to dust and water. These are all conditions that we are happy to comply with. Uh, the additions also uh, include restrictions in relation to the yard area adjacent to Mount Pleasant. There isn't going to be any storage of any wood in that part of the yard. Uh, I just also add about the uh, access which was a particular point that was mentioned the sole access is going to be through Lockshire and again away from the property at Mount Pleasant and also one comment which has been a particular concern throughout is about the fire I would say that we are working with uh, Natural Resources Wales to discuss a revised uh, fire plan on the site which is all about managing the risk and preventing fires which we simply just don't want ourselves um, Anyway, I'm uh, conscious about the time, so uh, thank you very much for listening to me and I uh, hope you can support your officer's recommendation. Thank you, Lucy, for that. Right, Rod? Uh, it'll be Rodri Davis now, Chair, from planning to present. Right, Rodri, please. Uh -huh. Sorry, Vice, sorry, Chair, could I just come in for a, for a moment um, before Certainly Rodri Jonathan. starts his presentation, if that's possible? Yes, um, Jonathan. Uh, th thanks for that. Um, I just need to, to point out to, um, to members that um, th there has been a request by the local member for um, uh, a full committee site visit. Um, and unfortunately, the current restrictions placed on us through um but by virtue of the covid pandemic uh, would make such a meeting um impossible at the moment we, we we wouldn't be able to um safely conduct a meeting uh under these current conditions uh, i have sought clarification from the legal officer on this and the legal officer has confirmed that that, that indeed that this would be uh, contrary to the regulations um uh Members as well would, would will need to do a full risk assessment um, and and submit that back to the legal officer as well. We're not quite in a position to do that at the moment. Um, I, th I think it's well worth pointing out as well that if if members and it's within their rights to do so, if they were to insist on on deferral to the site visit, um, just for members that are aware that this site does have a valid planning consent. That the consent will still operate. The activities will still go on. If we defer determination today, it's not going to prevent. Um, the activities that, to carry on. Now, my colleague Rodri will will do a proper presentation and and explain to members what the is in, entailed with this this particular application. Um, but I, I think it's important that uh, members are aware that we we are currently not in a position to operate any any site visits at the moment, um, and any delay to the determination of the application is probably not going to assist in in the process of dealing with some of the. Um, the, 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 the issues that have arisen there in, in, in the past. Uh, it should, should also be bear in mind is that in taking planning enforcement action, which we have done in the past on, on this site, if we were to take any further action as, as it may, 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 may be required, then the first recourse for a planning authority is to seek the applicant or the developer to rectify it through the planning system, which is what what would happen we'd have another planning application so deferral of this is, is not going to assist matters but the important point is that we, we're currently not in a position at present uh to to be able to conduct site visits and that may be some months off yet uh thank you very much chair that's okay, that's okay jonathan right i've got a number of members uh would like to speak but they can't speak until the officer presents his uh bit so could the officer please present Yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, for the benefit of the recording, my name is Roger Davis, Development and Building Control Manager at BCBC. This application is referred to members due to the number of objections received from local residents, the commoners and community councils, and following a call and request by a local ward member, as referred to in the report. The application is as per the report, seeking to vary conditions 1, 5 and 6, 
of the latest consent for the waste wood processing plant at Hailaku. The conditions relate to the approved layout and plans for the site, the maximum stack heights and the range of works that are authorised on this site. The operator must comply with the conditions of their permit issued by NRW, including but not limited to those around maximum production and tonnage per annum. In terms of the history of the site, Locks Yard, the front part of the site, has operated as a wood recycling facility for a number of years and it was extended to include the adjacent former Brinkethin nursery site in 2014. The applicant, Southwest Wood Products Limited, has recently taken on the site as the previous operator has gone into administration. This is one of several such sites that they control throughout the UK. Mm-hmm. It is accepted and acknowledged by officers that a number of the objections are the result of the recent history of the site by way of poor management, breaching conditions, the fact that the previous operator has gone into administration, and numerous environmental incidents such as a fire on the site. And the local planning authority has taken enforcement action against the site operators. It is understandable that there is a great deal of apprehension about this application and a fear that recent events might reoccur. However, the local plan authority have to consider any application on its own merits and on land use planning terms only. It is worth reiterating at the outset that the operation of the site is controlled by other legislation and the detailed permit issued by NRW. Whilst the consent will stipulate that the site cannot produce more than 120 tonnes per annum, NRW also control this output. There will be no wood storage or processing in the potential part of the former nurseries part of the site, just parking and storage of machinery, and there will be no requirement to use the access to the north of the site via common land. It is also proposed to upgrade the drainage system at the front access to trap water before it leaves the site and enters the highway and water courses beyond. The noise management plan as agreed and discharged under P17706 DOC will be updated to take into account the different layout of the site. Any new or modern machinery to be used on the site and the proximity of the bungalow which is now in separate ownership. Condition 10 will be reworded to secure the submission of an updated noise management plan. The previously approved dust management plan will still need to be adhered to and the current operator is committed to replacing the damaged mesh mesh fencing to the south of the locks yard part of the site and to planting additional trees around the boundaries to reduce the visual impact of the site. In terms of the mechanics of the application, the original planning permission will continue to subsist whatever the outcome of this application, although this application is a prerequisite for the applicant to acquire the relevant former nurseries part of the site from the Crown and to ensure a satisfactory form of development. The consent runs with the land and any other wood recycling company could process waste wood from the site, even if the current company stops operating from here. The site layout has been reconfigured from the original consent as a result of the need to concentrate the processing and storage operations around the locks yard part of the site, away from the bungalow which originally formed part of the wider site, but is now in private ownership. It is also proposed proposed to maintain an open yard for the storage of wood without the erection of workshop buildings on the western part of the site. In terms of the stack heights, whilst the current consent allows all external stockpiles up to five metres, the proposal is to increase this to seven metres as the current height restriction limits the scope for the business to accommodate seasonal fluctuations of unprocessed wood, which leads to numerous breaches of planning control. There is also a requirement to separate the stockpiles to form fire breaks as required by the Fire Prevention and Mitigation Plan. However, there is no requirement to increase the stack heights of processed wood, as there is a high turnover of processed wood with only limited amounts being stored on site at any one time. With regard to the range of works that can be undertaken at the site, it is proposed to formalise the seasonal preparation of domestic garden waste as part of a contract with BCBC and Kia. The material is shredded on site using the same equipment and prepared for bulk transfer to a site near Wells for composting. This element of the business is undertaken at the site under permit exemption from NRW held by the site.
The condition will therefore be reworded to regularise the planning status of the works carried out on this site. The current operator is processing wood more efficiently now as there is now more, more demand for the processed wood and there is less pressure on the operator or any economic incentive to take on and store more wood on site without having to process it for onward transmission. Previously, the operator was contractually obliged to take the waste wood, even though the demand for processed waste wood had not yet been established. I'll now show you some illustrations of this particular part of the site. Can everyone see that? Yes, Rod. Brilliant, thanks, Jay. Effectively, what we've got here is the an aerial view of the site. You've got the oh, right side. Sorry, sorry, Chair, I can't see anything. Okay. Has it come through now, Matthew? No, no. Is it is it in the reports pack? So I can look at that. Yes, it yeah, is. It, yes, it's the, yeah. I'll it through the reports pack. Okay. Yeah, the aerial view and the and the site layout plan is in the reports pack and some photographs, but not as much as I'm hoping to show now. Um, but for the benefit of the other members, um, if you can see that, that's uh, effectively the Locks Yard part of the site. Brinkethin Nursery is part of the site with, including that section, with Mount Pleasant bungalow in the, in the far north of the site. The access, cross common land will not be used. And that is a subject of a condition. So what we're looking at here is the crown land element. Is it uh, these elements here, as, as I'm indicating? And the fact that there will be no storage of wood or processing of wood in this area, and there won't be any buildings in this area as per the original application. Take you through the site. So this is a view of the, the site from, from the main road. Halo Q behind me. This is the entrance and the only entrance into the site of Heorfan. This is where the improvement works to the drainage is going to happen. In order to trap effectively trap uh, surface water from from the site from entering the highway. This is the way bridge. Wood being shredded in the background. This is the main uh, storage building of processed wood, which has recently been refurbished. This is the office block where the operations are managed. So you go in a westerly direction past the storage building for processed wood. You go towards the former Brinkethin nursery site. At the end of the processed wood storage building, this is an area where wood will be processed and this is where domestic uh, garden waste is being held at the moment. As you go into the former Brinkethin nursery site, this is what you will see at the minute. So this wood will be removed from this area and no processing will be undertaken in this area. Likewise, this wood to the right of the photo as you're going into the former Brinkethin nursery site, will have to be removed. The storage of containers will be allowed on this site together with parking and um, parking of HDVs. Um, but this wood will be removed and you can see the bungalow in the background there. Close up shot of the bungalow, fence panels, uh, etc. Close up again, so this waste wood will be removed from this area 
and all waste wood storage and processing will be removed from this area to re preserve the amenities of the occupier of Mount Pleasant bungalow. Looking back towards towards the, the Brinkethens nursery site, again showing the machinery stored in this area, containers and the waste wood which will have to be removed. And then we go on then towards uh, the external storage area for wood, which was approved under the original application and which was going to be the subject of buildings, but it's going to be external storage now. This is slightly cleaner wood than uh, the, the old uh, legacy wood. So this area is part of the crown land, but it is also covered by previous planning consents. Another shot of that uh, currently approved external storage area of wood. In conclusion, as, as explained in the report, it is reasonable to vary the wording of the conditions, to attach additional conditions and to reword existing conditions to control the operation of this site. For the avoidance of doubt and in compliance with the provisions under Section 73 of the Act, the recommendation will reimpose, add to and update all of the conditions attached to the original planning permission. The application is therefore recommended for approval, subject to conditions and informative notes as per the report. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Rod. Right, I'll call individuals now uh, in turn to ask questions to Rodri, obviously. First one is, is the Mayor, Councillor Watts. Yes, thank you, uh, Chair. Just putting my camera on. Thank you. Um, I've got, uh, I think it's three questions, but a comment first of all um, regarding the site visit in all my years on the council, if ever there was a need for a site visit, uh, this is it. Um, I, I appreciate what um, uh, Jonathan Parsons has said, um, and the photographs have been very good, but if one looked at them very closely, you can see the, the height of the stacks of the various piles of wood. Um, and when you stand by them, they're pretty impressive. So a site visit would give that feeling and awareness of, of what is going on there more so than photographs. My, my question is, um, if I can find the paragraph or the first question, on page top of page 14, um, it says the height of all external unprocessed stockpiles should not exceed seven metres. Well, I'm fully aware that in, in, with the previous agreement, it was five metres. And with five metres, I, I am personally aware of two fires there and caused, as I understand it, um, somewhat by the pressure of the wood causing combustion. So I'd like to hear how seven metres can be justified. So if one of the officers can explain that one, I, I'd be grateful. Rodri? Um, so, uh, do you oh, want sorry. to do it one by one or shall I ask them all first? Ask them all first, uh, okay. Councillor Watson, and then we'll go from there. OK, thank you. Um, and then I, I believe, although the, the previous company went into administration, uh, this new company, or, albeit a different name, has the same directors. Um, and I wondered if clarification could be given on that, please, and what uh, the responsibilities are for them uh, legally under contract and company law um, as to how they can carry on trading when they're exactly the same people. So that, that's, that's the second question. The third point, um, which I think is quite serious, uh, the bottom of page 18, uh, it says here from Councillor Williams's writings, the applicant's agent has also previously said in writing, on securing planning and permitting amendments, uh, South Wales Wood Recycling are prepared to take on the liabilities left on the site by the previous operator. Otherwise, as things currently stand, these costs and liabilities will be for the Crown taxpayer to pay. I would like to know how that comment can be reconciled, because I think we can all um, be aware of the hidden meaning of, of what's been said here. 
Um, so I was wondering if uh, somebody uh, from planning can uh, explain how that comment can be reconciled because it leaves BCBC expo exposed in my view. Um, those are the three points on that. So I do have another question, but that's on the other, the second part of the application. So thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you, Councillor Watts. Uh, Rodri, do you want to answer some of that? And I take it the legal will answer something else as well on the company side of things, the directors? Yeah, I can sort of answer that as well, yeah. Oh, yes, sorry, uh, Rod. Right, carry okay. on then. That's okay, Chair. Um, yes, in terms of the centimetre high stacks, yes, it's, it's only the unprocessed, so the bulkier, pieces of wood which will um which will not be as susceptible to uh fire as the finer process stuff um in this instance they are working closely with the fire service and they are updating the fire prevention plan um to make sure that something like what happened in 2006 doesn't happen again um the best way of doing that is to create the separation between the stacks unfortunately that that means that there's only a finite finite amount of space available on the site and especially now that all the wood is and processing is got to be removed from the central part of the site right behind the bungalow so the increase in stack height is not meant to be an all year round matter it's mainly to do with the senior seasonal sorry fluctuations of receipt of waste wood um which reaches its peak towards the end of spring and throughout the summer so in order to comply with the fire protection plan or prevention plan and to accommodate that without every time or every summer bre breaching the planning conditions uh, the increase to seven metre high stacks is sought. On the administration side of the business, I think you might be referring to, obviously there was the South Wales Wood uh, Renewables in the first place. Uh, they went into administration and then there was a, another company which did, I believe, have the same directorship as the previous company, which was iWood Renewables. Um, but this applicant is Southwest Wood Products Limited, so it's a completely different, um, uh, completely different um, company in, uh, seeking to operate this this site. Um, I think that was all your comments, if I believe I'm right. No, there's one more uh, chair. It was the uh, bottom of page 18. The uh, the uh, being prepared to take on the liabilities left by the previous operator, otherwise uh, BCBC would be left paying the costs of removal. And I said, uh, how can we reconcile that comment with the hidden meaning of it? I yeah, I think it's, it's, yeah, I don't think there's much of a uh, hidden meaning there. I think if obviously because this land where the legacy wood and, and uh, the fire damage wood is uh, located is within crown ownership at the minute um, without a planning permission albeit temporary and it's the next application which we'll be considering on this agenda then they cannot purchase that site off the uh, or gain control of that site from the crown and therefore they will not be obliged to process that wood and get rid of that wood. Um, in that instance, it'll fall back on the crown. And unless I'm uh, wrong in saying it, uh, I don't think the crown will be too interested in taking on the liability for that for that wood. So unfortunately, um, it is likely to fall back on public bodies to, to get rid of that wood and, and to remove that potential pollutant uh, for the uh, surrounding watercourses. Thank you, Thank you, Chair, if, if, if I can just say to conclude, I feel as though that comment is putting the planning uh, committee, the uh, development control committee under some pressure and I don't like it. And, and I'll just say that I don't like that comment. I think it's inappropriate. 
and should not form part of um, an applicant's reasons for having their application approved. So uh, I'll leave it there. Thank you. OK, Councillor Watts, thank you. Next person to ask a question is Amanda Williams. Uh, can I just ask, you, before you speak, Amanda, can I just ask members to take their hands down once they've spoken, please? I'll take mine down now, but then I'm going to have to leave after this, as I said. That, 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 the, that's fine, Amanda, yeah. you did say. Yeah, great, Fab, thanks. Um, a few questions from me as well. I absolutely wholeheartedly agree with everything Councillor Watts just said. I live in Coity, I'm, I'm the member for Coity, so I'm just down the road from here. I know the area well. I, not at the moment, I don't drive anywhere at the moment during lockdown, but I, it, it's a route I regularly take. Um, it's a route I walk around as well with my family, with my children. And I have significant concerns about the roads and the infrastructure to this place. I have significant concerns um, with regards to the, the stacking of the wood. The mess there now, I don't think the photos do it any justice at all. And it's something that does need a site visit. It does need people to see just exactly what we're talking about. Um, it's so narrow there, it's so dangerous. The roads are so dangerous as it is. Um, I know the residents of Coiti are all up in arms about this. They're not happy. Um, I, I've lived in my house 17 years, so I remember the fires. We couldn't open our windows for days. It's such a concern. I also couldn't find any of the fire plans in, that you're referring to in the papers. Have we got these? Because surely this should be presented before anyone could make a decision as well. So that's all I want to say, but I just simply cannot understand how this is coming to planning at the moment with so many uncertainties. Thanks. Thank you, Amanda. Rodri? Yes, in terms of the fire prevention plan, it's it's a document that is uh, prepared and produced by obviously the operator in conjunction with NRW and the fire service. So uh, as I mentioned in my report on my presentation, it's it's resolved and controlled by other pieces of legislation. As a local planning authority, we can only look at the land use planning matters of this scheme, not not everything covered by and doubling up on other legislation. Are you happy with Adam? Are you happy with that, Amanda? Sorry, come back. Well, not really, because if we're only dealing with planning things and yet we're saying well, if we don't approve this, then who's going to clean up this thing? That's not a planning matter either. It's a bit woolly. I mean, I'm a resident of Coiti. I'm quite happy if a group of us from Coiti will go and clear the area and remove the pollutants free of charge. That's, that's what the community would do, rather than say, well, we have to have this put there. Because I think we're, we're using the terms of what we can and can't discuss in this meeting very loosely. If we can discuss that we're not going to clear this site and yet we can't discuss the fire imp implications. It's, uh, it's really concerning. Thanks. OK, thank you. Right, next one then is John Paul. Thank you, Amanda. All right, thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair, Vice Chair, Chair, <laughs> Councillor Granville. Um, <laughs> uh, just a question on the site. Obviously, I agree with Councillor Amanda Williams and Councillor Watts. I think a site visit in normal times would definitely be something we would look to and move forward. Is But if we say today that we want a site visit and we can't, obviously we can't have one for six months, can the developer take the council to court and put this, push this through without this committee say so? Well, let, let's let's freeze on that point first. Let's, let's get an answer on that so we all understand the clarity I, I can, of the question. I can Jonathan? respond to that. Chair. Right, Jonathan. Please come in. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Chair. I can respond to that. What, what what is within the rights of the applicant to do if we don't get a decision today? Oh, it, it's it is deferred for a site visit, which may be for many, many months um, where well, the applicant can uh, appeal non-determination. And that means that that decision on this application will be taken out of the hands of the local authority and, and into the hands of the planning inspectors who will be looking at the planning merits and the planning merits only. Um, so so that, that's that's a potential course. There will be an appeal, there will be the the, um, the authority, they will have to defend that appeal, there will be extra resources and costs with that, and if the inspectorate are, are agree with the, the applicant, then 
and then, then the consent is granted. So that would happen regardless of, of what this particular committee uh, feels. It's not a, it's not a threatening issue. That's that's the law. That's that's what happens. It's it's there for a reason, um, and and that's what the potential course of action. I think what's probably more significant here, and this is perhaps more for the, the next item rather than the the item that we're currently considering, which is the relaxation of conditions, um, is that. Um, the, the issue that was raised before with the Crown land, um, well, that stack of wood that's been sitting there for a while will sit there for a lot longer. And it may well be that it's not removed, and that's the potential um, situation we may have. And it will need specialist treatment to remove it from the site. It's not a case of uh, just moving it at, you know, or taking it away. So it has to be treated and it has to be disposed of in, in an appropriate manner. And that's that's an implication that we may have to face. So that wood could be sitting there for months on end uh, without any recourse. Uh, and we couldn't enforce against that. We couldn't enforce that because it's where it's crown land. And secondly, as I said previously, it, the first um, thing we need to look at with planning enforcement is to rectify it through the planning system. The, mm. And this is a response to dealing with issues through the planning system. So so we're in this sort of situation is that if we defer decision on either of this item or the next item, then it's not going to change much on the ground. The, the operation will still go, but the, the risk is that A, the decision will be taken away from us and B, we could have... A, um, a pile of wood sitting on a site uh, almost indefinitely. And, and um, if we wanted it removed, we would have to go in and, and do that ourselves as, as an authority. So um, I hope that sort of answered the question. It's not, it's not, uh, I'm not threatening anybody here, as, as uh, I've been accused of in the past when referring to appeals, but I'm just stating this is what will happen or potentially will happen if a decision isn't made today. It's unfortunate with regard to site visits and, and if this was a normal circumstance then I would wallheartedly support a site visit to this property. Um, the committee have been there before but that was some time ago and we they were managed to see the sites, uh, the, both sites at that time. But yeah, we would thoroughly recommend that members see the site but we can't do that at the moment. We've got to make the decision based on the information that we, we, we have. Thank you Chair. Thank you, Jonathan. I think that was a comprehensive uh, answer to that particular question. John Paul, have you got another question? No, that was it. I just wanted to make sure we had the right um, legal knowledge before we said anything, made any decision. That was all. Thank you, Chair. OK, thank you, John Paul. Right, next one, Matthew. Voicey, Councillor Voicey. Thank, thank you, Chair. Um, clearly, looking at this um, application and the pictures and everything, um, there is there has been serious mismanagement by the company that used to own the site. And I think one of the most important things that we must consider with this application is that, first of all, there is a, a consent already for the site to operate, although um, it, it, this application is to regularise some of the, the, the issues there. The, the other important thing is that we must look at what, um, what's in front of us and um, clearly, I don't think I've ever seen an application with so many objections and detailed objections. Mm -hmm. However, many of these things may be related to the previous operator. Mm -hmm. I think that we, we must consider the current operator who seems to have more sites um, as a potentially clean sheet. Yeah. Now, um, I, I am concerned that we'll just get more of the same but um in terms of the the application what i wanted to to ask the the officers and legal officer if we are minded to consent this application because of the the the, the track record albeit of previous owners is there any time limit i think we've I, we've seen it previously where they have to make the changes with a period of time set by committee yeah. that the application would fail based on non-compliance with the time limit. Mm. Some sort of um, 
guarantee that if if it is minded to be passed by committee, that they've actually got to do the work, otherwise the consent would be withdrawn. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Rodri, would you like to answer that, please? Yes, thanks, thanks, Chair. Thanks, Councillor. Yeah, it's a good point. Um, obviously, planning permission is only the start of being able to do anything with uh, with the Brinkethin, former Brinkethin nursery site and the part of the site that's always been unauthorised. Um, and the next steps then with that permission or permissions, they will be the applicant will be able to go to the Crown to uh, secure the transfer of the land into their control and also to extend the permit to cover those areas. So there is a bit of a lead into it, but as far as I'm aware, as soon as those steps are undertaken, which will hopefully be sooner rather than later because uh, um, the transfer of the permit or the extension of the permit does take a bit of time. But uh, as far as I'm aware, the operator wants to crack on as soon as possible uh, once those permits and transfer of the land are in place uh, and take it from there. And on the next application, we have uh, a condition on the recommendation seeking uh, an annual review of the progress of removing that um, historic waste wood from that site over the three years, which seems a long time, but is there's so much wood there and it has to be blended with better quality wood to get it to a level that is not, doesn't have too much of a moisture content that would allow it to be accepted by the customers of this uh, processed wood. Um, and then, so every year they'll have to show us the progress uh, of removing that wood from the site. And then RW have also confirmed that no new waste wood can go on that site until that waste wood has been removed from that part of the site. So I think um, there is a general, um, a general uh, idea from the operator that they will crack on with uh, what they need to do and bring it back into compliance. And in terms of the conditions added to this consent, uh, these have been tightened and added to and updated to incorporate all the other conditions that were applied previously, plus some extra ones to ensure a satisfactory form of, of development and to make sure that we can enforce against that if something did go awry, which we're not expecting. Thank you, Thank you Chair. Thank you, Rodri. Uh, next one to speak is David Lewis. Councillor Lewis. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yes, totally go along with what uh, previous um, councillors have said. Um, for the start, uh, you know, I think if we did, if we don't, if it's not deferred today, then I certainly will go against the officer's recommendation. Uh, maybe if we have a site visit, then the company will be able to convince me that things have changed. I don't believe they have uh, since before the different lockdowns in between the lockdowns. Um, whilst out riding a bike, you can regularly go past and on the B4280 and see lorries coming across that common which is illegal, potentially the police could be involved and they could confiscate the vehicles and also prosecute. Um, over the last couple of years, twice um, a lorry's overturned outside there. The last one, the debris is still alongside the road to see now. It's dreadful and the, um, the piles of timber well, whenever I seem to go past there, uh, five metres is nothing. It's it's already seven metres and more now. So what has changed while they've been there, I do not know. It concerns me about the speed their vehicles do. There are a lot of cyclists using that road now. Um, I passed one day when it was coming out onto the uh, B4280, a lorry behind me. I passed doing 40 mile an hour towards Brinkethen. Uh, well before I got to bring Kathleen, the lorry was up my backside. 
you see them speeding through Brincathin village past the school. Uh, I think there should have been uh, some tra traffic assessment by the school because it's horrendous traffic every day there. Um, it's pretty obvious to me that they will continue to go through Brinkethin because they were on about, um, before they opened at eight o'clock in the morning, they would use sound services as, as, as an old holding area for the vehicles. You go down to Margam where they um, deliver, Margam is always um, got a pile of traffic waiting to go in there. And I can only see things getting worse and they don't convince me one bit that things have changed. Um, the, the other thing is the, the goals identified by the Wellbeing and Future Generations Act, they don't meet any of those whatsoever, no benefit whatsoever at all. And the threats again, I don't do threats. I think it's a very, um, well, my view is very dim on people who threaten, you know, and immediately the alarm bells start ringing. And Finally, I'd just like to say their predecessors and, and themselves, that's all they've given back to the community over the years. Uh, fire, fumes and dust, nothing else whatsoever towards the prosperity around the area, the health around the area, um, the youth around the area, nothing. They've just, that's all they've given over the years is aggravation. Thank you. Thank you, David. Rodri, please. Thanks, Jay. Thanks, Councillor. Yeah, yes, there's, uh, uh, there's not much in, in, in the way of questions I can answer there, really. But uh, in terms of the um, fact that there haven't been any changes recently on the site uh, with a new, new operator, they, to be fair, their, their hands have been tied with the fact that part of the site is, is now in Crown control and uh, and they need the comfort of having the permit to extend across those sites to be able to do anything with it so it's a bit of a bit of a chicken and egg element first but uh, um, tra traffic wise uh, off-site uh, yes I think it was suggested by by one uh, ward member that uh, perhaps traffic should be directed away from from Pencoid and Halo Q and just come from Brinkethin. But I think because of the nature of this site, it it does receive waste wood from all parts. So instead of trying to direct traffic for, uh, across one particular way, it's just best to sort of share share the pain, so to speak, out really bet uh, between all parts. And, uh, and in any case, there's not much by way of control that the operator can do to the deliveries to the sites. They can more so for uh, taking the waste, the processed waste wood from the site because it's their their lorries that they control. But otherwise, it's uh, it's it's difficult, and you can't stop anyone from using the uh, the public highway. So it's a uh, it's a tricky one. But uh, but that's that's uh, all I picked up from from uh, Councillor Lewis there. Then thank you, Jay. Okay. Thank you, Rodri. Next speaker is Councillor Spanswick. Thank you, Chair. Just take my hand down. Thank you. Yes, um, I, I'm sort of in agreement again with the, all the members I spoke to date. Um, the various points that Councillor Watts picked up are the very three ones I want to pick. But in addition to that, just want clarity that the on page 14, it talks about the domestic garden waste being collected by BCBC and Kia. I take it that's already happening. So while the applicant is saying they're new there, they're going to do the right thing, already doing things they haven't got permission for. And it does question, again, the photographs were useful at the Rodrigue show, they give a bit of an idea. I still think a site meeting would be the best way forward. Um, but even those photographs, one of them showed the bungalow. And if this company were that concerned about the neighbours and the community, they wouldn't have piled up the rubbish that was next to the bungalow. That would have got rid of that way one if they were a really good neighbour that wanted to treat the community and the adjacent properties well. And as for the community response and the amount of people, you know, they may be referring to past events there, but what have the company done to try and engage with the community, to talk to them, to show them a new, to show them they got a different uh, way forward? Doesn't appear to have happened. So it questions the whole integrity of 
a company and the, the, what we're dealing with here. And the very last point, and it, it adds on to what Councillor Watt said on page 18 and 19 about the sort of almost the threats, almost. Um, the, and the start it was, it was a site meeting in October, and the applicant proceeded to say that unless the application was approved, they cancel the contract, which Bridgend County, Bell Council, and Kia County have with them. What is that saying about a company we deal with? Not a lot. It gives us a bit of taste in my mouth, and I'm very disappointed uh, what we got before us today. Um, and I'm not sure how best to proceed at the moment. Okay, thank you, Councillor Spanswick. Rodri, please, would you like to answer that? Uh, yeah, best I can. Yeah, yes, um, obviously, uh, things haven't operated on the site uh, in the best manner uh, historically, and uh, a lot of that wood uh, in the Brinkethin, former Brinkethin nurseries part of the site has been there, there for quite a while. Unfortunately, the ex existing operator, because that is not in their control at the minute, they can't do too much about that. But with this uh, consent and the transfer of the land from Crown and the extension of the permit from NRW to cover this area, they'll be able to literally go on there legally to remove this wood uh, in compliance with the plan that they've submitted and to make sure that there's no processing or storage of wood or products on that part of the site to make this scheme a lot better in terms of residential amenities of the occupiers of that uh, bungalow. Uh, in terms of um, suggested or alleged threats, uh, it, it, it's probably best to explain that off, that it's, um, that it's, it's a sheer fact that if they're not allowed to deal with that wood, then it will be left to the crown and uh, and they will not be allowed or the per they will not be able to get the permit to actually deal with that wood um in terms of um clarity on on, on the site you're, you're right i think it's a bit of a chicken and egg i think once they get get control over this these portions of the site they'll be able to take uh steps to show the public and the more to the point the residents around there that they're hoping to operate this site and deal with it in a, in a proper manner and and it's a uk wide company um with several sites across across the uk and it is obviously their intention to run this in the same way as they run the other sites so so um in, in that's that's effectively uh, about as much as i can comment on on those uh, statements. Thank you, Thank you, Rod. Thank you, Rodri. John, do you want to come back on that? Any points? Just to clarify, check that my question was more around the, the garden waste, because the garden waste will combust a lot easier than, than wood will, especially if it's grass clipping and things. And I just try to clarify if the activity has started by the new company and is obviously and, and is it operating now without permission? Rod? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Th thank you, Councillor. Sorry, I, I missed that bit. Yes, uh, the garden waste contract is approved under exemption to the permit from NRW. What the operators didn't realise was that the extent of their consent on this site didn't quite cover uh, domestic garden waste as well as waste wood processing. Um, so that is why that condition is being updated to take into account this historic um contract that they have with bcbc and, and kia and uh, uh they basically use the same machinery to shred the um domestic garden waste and as you can imagine uh, there's been a lot of domestic garden waste uh, since the original pandemic and uh, the lockdown uh, and the fact that uh, to the extent can handle the amount of um, uh, garden waste that was being produced um but it's very seasonal, obviously, uh, due to the nature of that that waste production. And uh, the, it will start up again now, apparently, end of, uh, end of March. And uh, the process will go on from there. But we needed to regularise it from a planning point of view, because uh, in terms of that condition, it did not include the processing of garden waste, just waste wood product. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Rodri. Right, next one to speak is Councillor Collins, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, 
I've listened to councillors and my concerns are very much going back to Councillor Watt's comment about the liability facing the authority. So in view of the historic evidence of the inadequate management of wood products at the site and the restrictions as set out by Jonathan in terms of visiting the site regularly during the pandemic, Sorry, Rich, go on. And what what measures are the planning department able to offer this committee to demonstrate that the authority will not be compromised as part of due process? Thank you, Chair. Okay, Rodri, please. Oh, Jonathan. Yeah, so, no, thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, Councillor Collins. Yeah, yeah, basically, what we can, uh, the only thing we can uh, promise in, is in terms of if this consent is is allowed, um, the obligations will be passed over onto the operator to deal with that wood, and we would be seeking through condition, which is on on the at the end of the report, uh, a regular update of the progress in reducing that waste wood at the back of the site, um, and then we can review it at the end of the three years, and uh, and hopefully. Um, a lot of that, or all of that wood, will be removed from the site, which, which NRW are controlling by the fact, the very fact, that they um, will not allow any more storage of wood on there until that historic waste wood has been removed. Thank, Thank you, you, Rodri. Are you happy Sorry, with that I... answer, Councillor Collins? Thank you, Chair. I the point I would like to stress, though, is as part of this pandemic ongoing. It does restrict the ability of the authority and our enforcement team to visit the site. That is my specific point. Thank you, Chair. I, I can clarify that point, Chair, if, if that's OK. Jonathan, if you would like to come in, please. Yeah, uh, thank, thanks, Chair. I, I, can, I can clarify, I can confirm that um, whilst officers um, of, of, of the similar restrictions, uh, in the course of their work, it is regarded as essential and um, enforcement officers can visit the site. This site has been the subject of extensive enforcement um, investigation in the past. Uh, we did have officers that were visiting the site on a regular basis, checking lorry movements, etc. And that that happened right away up until the the, the um, uh, pandemic struck. But I can assure you, the members, that um, officers are still able to visit sites. It's at the present there are no committee site visits allowed. Um, that's that's the the main restriction. But officers are still able to, to visit site provided that social distancing um, um, measures are observed. So we we are actually still visiting sites. What we're not doing is is going into people's homes. Uh, we're not visiting like we used to. We're not looking at. Um, uh, you know, house extensions as much as we did before, but if we can visit a site safely, then then we're allowed to do it. So in this case, this is an industrial operation, and and we're able to um, uh, carry on inspections. You members may be aware as well that the building industry is still going. Uh, there are still um, site visits being taking place, building inspections taking place, highway inspections taking place. So the, the, there are certain aspects of, of a work that is still going ahead and planning enforcement is one of those. So I, I just uh, like to assure members on, on that fact. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. The next speaker is Sol Councillor Dendy. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, a few points, uh, meaning for my own clarification. Um, talking about the uh, picture with the bungalow next to the stacks of wood, uh, Rodri said that uh, that would be moved away for visual amenity's sake. I was also wondering if that was to include a fire break area, because in the photos it seemed like it was very close to the property. Obviously, you've been told, you know, the the uh, fire legislature, uh, you know, the fire report and stuff is going to be coming out. Is that something then that we would override anything we put in, or would it be possible for us on a health and safety ground to put into the recommendations that a fire break is in place between the property and, and the wood storage? Um, on top of that as well, um, uh, Roger also said that, the, as far as I'm aware, that the seven metres was the fact that 
the way that the fire policy might be is for them to have the stacks further apart. So seven metres high would mean they'd be able to space out further compared to the wood. And also talked about not doubling up on legislation. Um, but how do we know seven metres is fine if we don't know what the actual recommendations from that fire report are? I'm, I'm a bit unclear about that. Um, the other thing as well is there seems to be a lot of confusion about the operators and when they take over. And so I'd like to know, when did these operators take over this site? Um, how long ago was it? And what non-compliance or breaches have taken place in that time? Um, my final point I'd like to say is about the site visit. I understand the constraints that we currently have through to coronavirus, um, but on a previous uh, plan and application that we had where we decided a site visit was needed, it was talked about having a small group of uh, members of this committee go and see it. Obviously, I'm understanding now from Jonathan's just previous words that that's not possible, but we have before in this in these times decided to delay putting an application through due to not being able to have a site visit. So I just wanted to remind people of that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Dendy. Rodri, please. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Thanks, Councillor. Yeah, I'll, I'll try and make sure I don't miss any of those points. Uh, in terms of the fire break behind the property, it's more of a residential amenity issue. Um, rather than visual amenity, but also obviously if you still have stacks there, it's, it's going to uh, have an impact on the outlook from that bungalow. But uh, the whole point about this site at the back, if I uh, pull up the site again, uh, two seconds, if I show you which one that one, All right. The proposed site. So what's going to happen in this area is no wood storage whatsoever. Can, Rodri, can I just stop you for a second? Yeah. Ma, Ma, Councillor Voicey, I, I know you can hear me. Can you see what Rodri has now got up in the screen? Yeah, it actually came after a while. I don't know why it was the delay. Yeah, but I right, as long as you can see it. No, no, I just wanted you to make There's sure that you can see delay. it. So, so, yeah. Sorry, Rodri, I just no, I didn't want anybody to say that they didn't see it. Yeah, no, I can no, see no. this. That's fair enough. So, so in terms of of the wood there, if I scan down to what's there at the minute, once they gain control of this area, they'll be able to remove these stacks of wood. Uh, hence, they'll be going and obviously the bungalow in the background there. They won't have this in front of them. Once they have the containers, they won't have these mounds of wood or these mounds of wood. More to the point, as Councillor Spanswick picked up, these will be removed. Uh, from the site to the locks yard area. So what we're talking about is everything in here will have to be put on here or in there, which has been previously approved as well. So away from the bungalow. I think I mentioned in the report and in my presentation that this bungalow did used to form part of the wider, that's why it's in the red line, did used to form part of the wider uh, business and operation from this site and it was supposed to have been used as a welfare building for the staff but it has never been so it's always been occupied as a as a residential dwelling and I, I believe one of the inhabitants now uh, used to work on this site but no longer does so so effectively we need to preserve their uh, residential amenities and that's why we're going to hold the new operator once they gain control from the crown over this land again to move all the wood that, that is in there now away into these areas and to make sure that there's no processing of wood at all going on in this area because obviously the noise impact on the residential occupier there would be significant. In terms of the seven meter high stacks it'll be external storage of uh, unprocessed waste wood, so bulkier blocks of wood, etc., in these areas. So, what I was mentioning with the seven meter high extent, extension from the current five meter stipulation is at the minute there are seasonal fluctuations, so they get peak supplies during the summer months, late spring, summer months. And to be able to hold that on site, 
without breaching the condition, uh, they are seeking an extension of that to seven meters. What I meant by the fire bricks was obviously there's a fire prevention plan drawn up by the fire service and the operators in NRW. And because of the fact that there'll have to be gaps in between, to move all the wood from here to this location and to make sure that there are enough gaps in between the piles, um, that occasionally they will have to go up to seven meters in height. What we've sought off the back of this recommendation as well is uh, a reinstatement of the mesh netting on these boundaries together with uh, additional tree planting around the boundaries to soften the impact, the visual impact of the site uh, from surrounding occupiers. Um, thirdly, I think you wanted to know what breaches have occurred uh, since Southwest Wood Products Limited have been involved with the site. I think they became involved uh, with iWood Renewables um, to be able to process uh, the wood and provide wood to their customers, uh, namely Margam and Cronospan. Um, I think it was about 18 months to two years ago. Uh, with this transfer of the permit, it will be completely in their control. Uh, they've had the permit transferred to them for the locks yard element. And once they gain permission to relax the conditions on these sites, they'll be able to get the transfer, which is in crown ownership at the minute. They'll be able to get transfer of the control of this, these pieces of land to themselves. And they will be able to extend the permit to include these areas. In terms of the production of processed wood from this site, it will not exceed the maximum they are allowed under the permit but given to them by NRW. Um, even with the extension to the permits, the amount of produce would be the same. So 120,000 tons of waste wood, processed waste wood every year. Um, in terms of breaches, I'm not aware of um, cases where we've had to investigate since Southwest Wood products have been involved. Obviously, there's been the odd uh, complaint that lorries are arriving too early or trying to gain access to the site too early. We've obviously had issues with uh, the drainage in this crown land uh, potentially polluting the water courses, which probably is polluting the water courses. So that's why NRW are involved and their legislation kicks in as well. Um, but apart from that, um, nothing that I am aware of. Uh, the occasional uh, complaint about wood being tipped onto the roads uh, and the adjoining carriageways, which is an issue. But as I've mentioned in the report, uh, it's difficult for the operator to control that because um, whilst they can use their lorries, covered lorries, to export the processed wood from the site. The wood that is coming into the site is from all sorts of uh, sites and, and uh, suppliers, and they do not have control over what how they deliver the, the wood to the site. Uh, they do, however, occasionally um, take out a road sweeper to try and uh, reduce the impact of these pieces of wood on, on the carriageways. Uh, in terms of site visit, you're right, uh, I think you're referring to the um, dog breeding uh, business in uh, Blangaru. Um, that is held in abeyance until we uh, can, can arrange some sort of committee site visit to that site. Obviously, since then, um, the lockdown and the regulations and the restrictions have become even more uh, controlled and reduced our capacity even further to hold site visits uh, en masse. 
and uh, it would, as it's not classed as an essential uh, part of of the business and and our work, then uh, we cannot undertake the, that site visit on this site as as it stands. So um, I, I hope you'll understand that that situation where where we're at. That's why I've attempted to walk you through the site to show you exactly what's happening there at the minute and what what's there. So, uh, the, which would preclude us having to go out on site on mass. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Rodri. And the last speaker. Can I? Sorry, Chair, can I just, yeah, yeah, just can I just come back? Can I just ask for clarification then? Um, so, with the Ocean Farm thing, it, would it be a case that this one then could be appealed and not be um, left until the site visit comes because it's stated as an essential part of their business? Is that why uh, we can't hold it the same way we did the other one? Um, answer that. Just, yeah, I'm not really sure what you mean there, Councillor. I think um, in this instance, if if we delay for, for a site visit, it, it would be uh, the option available to the applicant would be to appeal against non-determination of this application. And it, it has been in for a few months. I think it was submitted uh, around about end of July, August of last year. So that would be the option available to them would be to appeal against non-determination and then we would have to uh, determine the application. Uh, we would have the ability to determine the application within four weeks, but not necessarily with a site visit. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Rodri. Uh, just to add to that, um, Chair, if I may, um, in, in response to Councillor Dendy, the, the application that's held in abeyance, that's the, the, the um, uh, dog breeding proposal that is still held in abeyance. There's still no decision on that. And again, that that it's, it is open for that applicant to appeal that um, uh, appeal against non determination as well. The applicant has chosen not to do so, but that that is an option. It's open. Um, members um, moved at, at that meeting to um, not to determine until the site was carried out. But as Rodri said, unfortunately. Um, we, we've we've not been able to address that. Uh, we, we've we've tried to amend our protocol temporarily to allow smaller site visit, i.e., uh, a sort of expanded panel. And members may recall that we we took this through um, uh, committee uh, uh, back in the autumn. Unfortunately, then we started getting the local lockdowns, and then a fire break happened, and then uh, we've got the full lockdown on. So we haven't really been able to. Um, to take advantage of that amended protocol, unfortunately. Hopefully, if conditions improve uh, as we go into the spring, then then perhaps we can reenact that, um, provided it's safe to do so. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Jonathan. Right. Councillor Radcliffe, please. Uh, yeah, thank you, Chair. I've just got a quick question relating to the ability of the applicant to appeal non-determination, and that is, how many times in the past year has that actually happened across Wales? And if it seems to be happening frequently, is the chair is the chair prepared, or rather, is the department prepared to write to Welsh government to bring it to their attention that there appears to be a loophole here in the law, in the sense that a developer could bypass the democratic procedures uh, due to the fact that we have this national emergency at the moment, and therefore, obviously, site visits can't take place i can come in again chair if you, if you like um yeah it's 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 not technically it's not a loophole it's the right it is a right for an applicant to appeal non-determination um if, if an authority doesn't uh, determine the application within the fixed time period and that's generally it's eight weeks or if agreed an extension to that um, that's been in, in place for, for quite a while. It's, it's a fundamental part of the planning process and that right is there. That right's not going to go away. Unfortunately, during the pandemic, there may have been restrictions on um, the ability of planning committees to actually visit sites. Um, unfortunately, that's not going to change the, the current law because that, that would take legislation to do that. Um, I would say that in Bridgend, we don't have um, very many occasions where people have appealed 
against the non-determination because we're generally pretty efficient. The committee is very efficient and we generally do make decisions within the required time period. It's in nobody's interest to go through an appeal process um, to 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 carry out what was uh, what would normally be happening anyway. Um, across Wales, well, I am aware that in some authorities that 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 there is a there is a an element where some some applications are carried through to a non-determination. I don't think it happens that often, uh, but it is a it is a possibility. And I think it would depend on the case. Um, if 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 there was um, um, some circumstances that means that there's 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 a necessity to get things moving, then I'm pretty sure that an applicant would use that appeal process. Um, it is a part of law. It is a fundamental part of planning law. We are not going to change that. That's 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 that is it. I can't I I can't I, I can't really uh, do that. And I, I mean, there have been changes. Uh, Councillor Swans, we just put a note up there. There have been changes to planning law to cope with the pandemic. Um, that's to allow more permitted development rights. It's it, you know, to allow things to happen. To deal with the crisis, to deal with the the, the the COVID situation, but to take away somebody's right to appeal, I think that's 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 going to be quite fundamental. Um, if members feel strongly enough about it, then you're the politicians. Uh, you can take this up with your elected representatives. Uh, if you feel strongly enough, you can you've you've got the political mandate uh, to do that. But as an officer. Uh, I would not uh, recommend that we approach world government to change this planning law at the moment, uh, and I, I'd have no basis to to put that on presently. It's not an ideal situation. I accept that, and under normal circumstances, as I said previously, we would have members to um, uh, to visit the site. We can't do that at the moment. It is not possible to do that. If this application is deferred for a site visit and that doesn't happen, then I have already previously outlined what possibly could happen as, as a result of that. I, I don't think it's going to stop. Well, I can say for certainty it's not going to stop operations here. In fact, um, it, it's probably not going to help matters if, if this determination isn't done promptly. Um, I mean, we can extend the eight week period. We're already allowed to do that under law, but we can't keep doing that indefinitely because the applicant wants a decision. The applicants want to move on and we're already in a position where this application is already well over the eight week period um, and we can extend it again and again. But it, you know, if the applicant wants that decision, then the, the only course of action is, is to appeal non-determination. And as I said earlier, that um, that decision will could be taken out of our hands. So that's, uh, I, I can't really say much more than that. I, I appreciate member sentiments in this, but this is the law. And even if we went to work and say change this, that's not going to happen very, very quickly. I can assure you of that. Thank you. OK, Jonathan, thank you. Um, thank you, Councillor Spanswick, for making them points. Uh, I'll bring you in later if you want to come back in after John. Uh, but let's go through the list first because you have spoken. Um, uh, Councillor Hussein, please. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, we are going through abnormal times and uh, we are in pandemic. It has slowed us all down. All councillors said it very well. And I have very little knowledge about the area, but I, Rodri, the photographs you have shown are of very poor quality. There are health and safety issues, and I think yeah. We should put it on hold until and unless there is a visit of the site, then we can make our uh, determination. And I can't, I, I don't think I have to say anything more than this. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Hussain. Um, was it you, Councillor Lewis, that just put up a, a thing to me? David? Uh, actually, it's Janice. Oh, Janice, OK. Yeah, right. sorry, it was never David, it was me. I've been waiting patiently. Um, what it is, uh, I am very concerned as well on behalf of uh, Brincourt. Um, the, the traffic, for one, is 
no, it's excruciating um, uh, uh, on the A four six one. But interesting enough, what uh, the point that David made is that apparently they would use um, sound services as a holding point until they opened at eight o'clock. Well, what time do children go to school? Around about eight o'clock. So when will those lorries be going past the school? Around about eight o'clock. So that means that they have big, huge lorries going past them as they're walking to school on what is supposedly a safe route because it has a plate path uh, uh, running along it. But I don't know how safe that is with a lorry going past you at, at 30 mile an hour. Um, and also another feeling I have is about the um, fire that they had there. Yes, it was terrible. And I had to keep my windows shut in San for the length of time that the fire was going on because of the smell that it was producing. So I feel that it's unsafe uh, with the traffic coming from there, because surely if there is going to be a seasonal um, um, part where they are dealing with the um, vegetables and things like that for composting, that there'll be an increase on traffic uh, coming from there, surely. And there will be more lorries going past the school, past Brinkethen, onto the M4. So, as I said, I have concerns about the traffic there, about the fire there. So, um, that's uh, one of the few things I'd like answered, please. Thank you. Rodri, please. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Thanks, Councillor. Yeah, with the traffic, obviously, um, the consent remains on that site, so the traffic will, will not be affected, even if uh, we do not approve uh, these. Uh, these applications now so it, right. there, there is a lot of traffic and I, I mentioned earlier that uh, one, one oh, oh they've done it now yeah janice can you turn your mic off please oh sorry i do right all rod so where was i right in terms of the traffic obviously uh i mentioned earlier that one ward member uh would like the lorries to avoid a, a certain part of the borough, but um, obviously the, these suppliers are coming from all parts of, of South Wales. So, so um, in that sense, the the impact is is spread across um, all parts rather than just coming through, say, Brinkethin, for example. So it, it is what it is unfortunately and, and the previous consent so the historic consent on this site does allow it to open at eight o'clock so um, we'd be remiss in, in reducing that any further just because it uh, could potentially impact on on local schools in terms of the um the fire issue yes it was a historic fire it happened in 2016 hasn't happened since uh, i remember having receiving a complaint um about uh, the stacks looking like they were on fire recently i think it's just before christmas i visited the site and it was actually uh, just an atmospheric thing with, with with fog in that instance so so it wasn't actually a fire so so what they are hoping to do with these sites now is with the fire breaks with the fire prevention plan which is drawn up with the fire service and controlled by nrw as well that this that will not happen again. So, um, so that is the obvious obvious intention of the operator because they don't want a fire there themselves uh, anyway. Because obviously, any damage to the wood would make it worthless. So, so um, I think that that covered uh, your couple of points, uh, Councillor. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Rod. Uh, and the last speaker before I bring in two other speakers that have already spoken. Councillor Sturman, did you raise your hand and want to speak? I did, yes, please. Thank um, you, it's your turn. Thank you. Um, there doesn't seem to be much ap uh, um, appetite to go anywhere with this. Can I therefore move that we defer it for a site visit? And if in the meantime they decide to go for um, non-determination, so be it. May I make that suggestion? Thank you, okay, Chair. Well, Right, thank you. I've taken that on board. But we've got two other speakers now to come back on, okay. and we'll go to we'll go to the first one, which was Councillor Watts, please. Yes, thank you, Chair. Just a couple of points that have sort of come out of what is being said. Um, the first one is, how was it that uh, Councillors Williams and Thomas were able to visit the site in October, 
when uh, there were restrictions, they made a site visit. Um, could not the site be videoed if we cannot go as a site visit and that video shown to the committee? Um, the third point is, I believe we should not let COVID uh, control us in this. We've got uh, a, a commitment and a duty to um, the residents. And I think as long as we act reasonably within the law, I, I for one believe that we would not be castigated for delaying this because in my opinion, and I'm sure in the opinion of many others, we are acting reasonably. And that is the criteria that we should apply here. And as long as we apply that reasonableness, then I believe um, uh, any appeal um, would fall on that. And I'd be quite disappointed in the law if that did not uh, uh, help us in, in, in being reasonable. Um, and the question possibly to Rodri is, um, if this is allowed, if, big if, if this is allowed, what level of non-compliance would shut the place down? Is there some idea of what uh, um, would cause the place to be shut down? Because we don't seem to have discussed that. That if these, if if it is allowed, and I, from what I've heard from all the other members, I, I don't see it going forward. Um, but if, if it were to, then um, how bad do they have to be before it shut down? Thank you, Chair. Jonathan, Chair, do you want to come in? Yeah, I can come in. No. Yeah, I, I think you, um, Councillor Watt, you've raised some very good points there, and so there's uh, nothing I would I would say I would disagree with in principle. I think I think it's. Um, uh, I think there's some very interesting suggestions as well. Um, I'll deal with your last question first, if I may. Um, we spent um, uh, quite a considerable amount of time and, and expense, to, um, to be fair, on engaging uh, council to, to give us some legal advice, uh, some bespoke legal advice on this site as to what measures we could take. Uh, one of which, and, and this is going back to the previous operator, I must add, not the current operator, uh, just, to, just to be clear. Um, we, we went um, to, to a specialist barrister for advice on this. Uh, there isn't an awful lot that we can do to actually stop activities on this site. Um, they have got a, a valid planning consent. Um, we, we've sought to enforce the planning conditions we have enforced they've gone to magistrates court and we've we have been successful in some of the cases that we have brought um and we've there have been fines issued but the fundamental part of planning enforcement is that it's it's not a punishment we can't punish people for breaking planning law it's not legal it's not a legal um or criminal act then Initially, I mean, it does become criminal if you don't comply with um, uh, magistrate orders and, and, and other notices. But in, essentially, the way to deal with planning enforcement cases is through the planning system and to encourage applicants to come in with planning application to regularise matters and um, to deal with it that way. And this is what's currently happening. This is what we've got before you. Um, what you need to bear in mind as well, members, is, is if you did defer this, and waited for an appeal. What are you hoping to achieve from that? Um, what is it that you, you wish to do? Is it to punish the applicant or is there a genuine land use planning consideration behind um, your intentions? Because a planning inspector will not look at it as a local member, will not look at it as a resident um, or a community council or, or, or whatever. The planning inspector will look at it on the material planning considerations uh, at that particular time. Um, I, I can't comment on why Councillor Williams and Councillor Thomas visited the site. I can only assume that they, we weren't in the full restrictions that we are now. I don't know, but that is a matter for those members to answer those questions. I'm not about to launch an investigation into it. Um, that's that's not for me to do, but it's for those members to, to ask themselves that question. Um, um, but at the moment, what I can confirm is that since the, the latest lockdown has come into place, that, that any site visits with members is, 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 is can't take can't happen and that's the advice I've had from the legal officer and again if members have got issues with that then you may want to approach a legal officer 
or you may wish to do your own risk assessment and submit that back to the, to the legal officer. Um, I think um, we, it isn't unreasonable um, to request a site visit because quite clearly there are uh, some emotive um, issues have been raised here today and I fully understand that point. Um, it's it's been suggested that we could look at video site visit again. I, just, I was going to, Jonathan, I, Jonathan, can yeah. I just come in? I was just yeah. going to, I was going to suggest that we've done that for the Mystic plant, did we not? Yeah. And it was successful. I, I think perhaps that's what we should be looking at doing. Well, that, that's something we can certainly look at, but we need somebody to to actually take the video, I think. All um, oh, right. Um, and, and that'll have to be done safely as well, obviously, because yeah. you're in a, in a live in the plant. Law. But that's, it is something we could look at, um, so so we, we could consider that as, as, an, as a possibility. Um, obviously, it's not going to be the same as visiting the site in, in person, but it's, it's probably the closest we can get. Yeah. Uh, I was hoping that the presentation that Rodri did earlier on, which shows the photographs, would have had a similar effect, but um, I understand if members are um, concerned about that. And I also take the point that of we shouldn't be controlled by COVID. We seem to have been, for the last almost a year, um, we, we seem to have been controlled very heavily by this 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 major global event, and uh, perhaps we should take control. Um, and that may be something that um, you know we we need to perhaps look at alternative ways. We have tried to sort of change our protocols with site visit, but unfortunately that 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 event overtook us. But I, I think the questions. I hopefully I've answered um, Councillor Watson's question, but the fundamental thing I want members to take away from you is if you were to defer this, what you hope to achieve and what do you think you you, you know, would be, uh, would, would the, the, the potential, what may happen after that be um, on balance, would that be proportionate to what, um, what, what members' intentions are? So um, hopefully that, that has answered Jonathan, some. Jonathan, I, I got some information for you regarding the site meetings. It was in October, it was a BCBC site meeting. Councillor Watts had just put that through now. Yeah, well, I, I understand it in October we yeah. weren't in the similar yeah. lockdown position. Sorry, Rod, I, I'm only replying, repeating. Yeah, what no, that's all right. No, I, I can say yeah. exactly what it was. It's basically, I felt it was a good idea for the local ward members who have shown uh, a concern about this site in the past to be able to actually go on site and have a look at it. Uh, John is right, there is a lot more relaxed in terms of the restrictions compared to sort of pre-Christmas and after Christmas. Um, but it was my suggestion because I felt there was a good idea for the local ward members to see, to meet the applicant, to consider what the issues are, to make suggestions, which it was useful in that extent. Uh, I remember Councillor Thomas suggesting more boundary treatment to try and enclose the site to screen it from, from long distance views. So, um, so it is an opportunity for them to see it rather than second guess what is happening on the site and what is going to happen on the site. So uh, see it in the flesh. Obviously, with only a couple of members, a couple of officers and the applicant and the agent, there wasn't that many people there. So we could quite reasonably um, uh, dis uh, socially distant. So um, this nice that was uh, between ourselves. So uh, so it, it was a lot easier back then. But uh, with say eighteen members, x amount of officers, applicant, probably residents, uh, the, the commoners would probably want to be become involved. Uh, perhaps the community councils would wish to attend as well. So it would get a bit more unwieldy than a small sort of uh, meeting amongst a few members and and officers as we had in October. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you, Roddy. That was explained uh, to everybody then. Right, the last speaker who I've got is, is uh, Councillor Boise again, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, I've listened to all this, this um, member um, questions and the answers from officers. And I want to put a point to all members that as a committee, we're here to make determinations and we have to determine on the facts we have in front of us. Um, we, we usually uh, are able to do so. We've had pictures, we've had uh, the report. Um, and I do feel that, yes, it would be nice to have a site visit, but we live in a world at the moment where we can't. 
I really do think that we need to determine this application one way or another, either for or against today, because if we don't, um, it, it's just going to drag on and on, and we're going to have this problem, and it could it could last for many, many, many more months. We've also got another application on the agenda today, um, which could have the same issues with. So um, we are a committee that has to determine things, and that's what we should do based on the information we have. Also, um, I, I've listened to all the points with members about highways and traffic and one thing and another. We must remember there is a consent already on this site. So it's more of the same if we if if we don't make um, a determination. And I, I actually think the only way that this site is going to improve is if they get on and improve it, mm. which is part of the determination if we agree to consent it. Um, I, I, it's a difficult one, but we, we have to sometimes put our heads above the parapet and make a decision. And I think just kicking this down the road, it's not going to do any good. And listening to what the officers have said, um, what will we achieve by kicking it down the road? Um, you know, the facts, will they change? Possibly not. Um, so I really do feel that we do need to um, make a determination um, and make a decision today. Um, so I'll leave it there. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Boise. Right, the last speaker uh, who I've got is Councillor Webster. Thanks very much, Chair. I just wanted to... Um agree with everything that Councillor Voisey said in his last um, contribution, actually, um, and to add another voice to that. Um, this is something that we do. We're going to have to uh, make a decision on it. We're not we, we don't sit on this, uh, uh, th this committee to not make decisions about things. I think that there are improvements. It's not the same company um, and it's it's time to allow this new company to um, to show what a good company looks like. And there are other authorities involved in in the business, if you see what I mean, with Natural Resources Wales, the Fire Authority. And I'm sure that they would um, deal with issues that they have uh, control over, just the same as we are dealing with the planning issue here. And it's, it's time to make that decision. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Webster. Right, has anybody else now... Got nothing to say. Oh. Chair, can I can I come in briefly yeah, now? Yeah. Yes, Rod. Sorry, I don't again. I was very myself earlier. Rodrick Jones, legal officer for the committee. Um, yeah, so far, Chair, there's only one thing being moved. That's from Councillor Sturman. That was from Councillor Sturman, which we moved a farewell. There wasn't hasn't yet been a second, eh? No. But I just wanted to put just wanted to make our comment at the moment before we we go. When we will be ever with uh, with uh, voting or taking or taking a motion. So that motion we need a second to chair if it's going to be put. Yeah. Uh, but um, I don't know if there's any other members who wish to speak first. Well, I think everybody uh, who wants to speak I had spoken. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yes, Rod. Uh, that I don't think anybody else wants to speak. Okay, so. The question, the question that raises chair. Uh, chair Sorrel Dendy is indicating. Oh, sorry. Councillor Dendy is indicating. All right, Councillor Dendy. Thank you. I just wanted to ask another question. Um, and it's about the drainage on the site. Is there actually a drainage plan that comes uh, with this application, or is this something that will be looked at afterwards? Thank you. Rodri. Yeah, it's a sub. Sorry, chair. Uh, yes, it's the subject of a condition requiring that detail which they're preparing with uh, NRW at the minute for the front of the site onto Hailham and uh, basically we will be requesting that to be submitted to us as well to have a look at. Thank you Chair. Thank you Rodri. Okay, happy with that uh, Councillor Dendy? Yes thank you. Okay Rod? Yeah so Chair as I say we've got one motion which is for the deferral for a site visit. Now I don't know if he's a seconder. Is anybody second Councillor Sturman's proposal? I'll second, Chair. Yeah, me too. So that's been seconded, Chair. So uh, the first thing to do, I think, is to put that motion to 
the vote if um, if we if it needs a vote, and I imagine it will. So, I would can uh, can I ask Mark to come in here just to to advise members on a vote, please. Mark. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Mark Galvin, Senior Democratic Services Officer Committees. Um, you heard the legal officer there, so we'll proceed to a vote for, against, or abstain. Um, in no particular order. Um, Councillor Hussein, please. Councillor Hussein? Against. Thank you. No. no. I think you need to uh, reassert. Yeah, sorry, yeah. sorry, Chair. Can I come back? Yeah, we can perhaps retake our first vote if need be, just to come back in and, and advise committee. What we're voting for here is would this be deferred for a site visit? That's the proposal before committee. It's not to approve your application. All right. Or to refuse Thank you. it. <laughs> sorry, it's it's my mis my fault, uh, Councillor. No worries, sir. I should have restated yeah, it. Yeah, we'll defer it. Okay, so uh, perhaps Mark can start again, and we'll and we'll call your name first, Councillor Hussain. Hold on. Okay, then, Councillor Hussain, you're the legal officer. Are you for, against, or abstain? No, we'll defer it again. It is for uh, yes site, until we have site visit. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh. yes. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Webster. Please. Councillor Webster. Yes. yes. So it's, I had interruption there on my on my phone. So it's the um, not on my phone on the speaker um, against the motion, please. Thank you, Councillor Edwards. Please. For chair. Thank you, Councillor David Lewis. Please. Uh, for. Councillor James Radcliffe, please. For deferral. Councillor Janice Lewis, please. Hello, I didn't get that. Do it again. For. No. Thank you. Councillor John Paul Blundell, please. Uh, for. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Ken Watts, please. Yes, sir. Four. Thank you. Councillor Matthew Voisey, please. Against. Thanks. Councillor Richard Collins, please. Four. Councillor Richard Granville, please. Against. Councillor Ross Sturman, please. Four, please, Chair. Councillor Sorrel Dendy. Four. Um, I believe, Chair, that's all members that are present. Thank you. Right. Can you give us? Uh, I I take his for defer deferral, and Mark. Uh, was the legal Councillor Spanswick vote. No, Councillor Spanswick hasn't moved. I Has think, he gone? I, I think, think he's, he's left. The, he's left the meeting. I think, Chair, he's not in the participants list. No, he's not. He, you're right. He asked me. To, he had to go to another to another meeting. He had to go to another meeting. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, Rod. Yeah. No, no, my fault, Jim. I, I thought Councillor Spanzig was still present. So that's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, that's ten for deferral for site visit and three against. So it's been deferred then. So that's been deferred, Chair. Uh, that motion is carried. Okay. Thank you, Rodri. What's or or or, or uh, Rodri? What's 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 the outcome now? Uh, good question, Chair. Um, effectively, uh, <laughs> you've uh, <laughs> members have voted to defer this application for a site visit, which we don't know when that will happen. But uh, um, Rod might be able to answer that a bit better. Uh, can, can I? Can I? Jonathan, do you want to come in? Just, yeah, just to come in. Thank you, Chair. It, it has been suggested that um, that there may be a video site visit. Um, if that would be something that, uh, again, whether members would be would be happy for a virtual site visit rather than a physical site visit, that hasn't. It, I don't think it's it's um, 
the the vote has just taken as, as specified either way, but is that something that um, members um, may be interested in doing? Well, for personal experience, we've done one for the uh, MySteg uh, paper mills and it worked. That's all I'm going to tell members, it did work because we made a decision to grant that decision, but on, on, on what the presentation was, it was fantastic. So uh, it's up to members, really. I'm not going to go which way. Roz? So, was that Roz or Rod? Roz. Me? Yes. Yeah, right. Yeah, no, I'm happy to go for a video site visit. Sorry. <laughs> right, thank you for that. Can, can we... Well, hang, a, hang a second, Councillor Denby. Councillor Watts, would you be happy with that? Yes, I would. As I uh, suggested it, yes, of course, I'll be happy with the video uh, site visit. Okay. Councillor Dendy, sorry. Oh, well, uh, th uh, thank you, Chair. I was just wondering, um, in terms of this, will also uh, this application also include stuff about noise. Can we make sure that this video does have sound included as well? as I know that previous ones did not include sound. I'm sure the officer is listening to that quite contently and he's nodding his head. So yes, I think that's approved. Councillor Webster. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, I'm going to look at Rod, um, legal officer, and ask at this point then, shall I propose formally that we had, do we need to do this formally with the proposal um, that it's a video motion or can we just go ahead and do it? Uh, well, Chair, did. I mean, committees seem to be indicating they're happy. I mean, if, can we just take a, a quick sort of, um, if everybody affirms, rather I'm than take happy, a formal I'm vote? I'm happy with it. We, we can vote any, on this motion. Let, yes. say, is anybody not happy with it? Uh, well, what your silence, Rod? I think that's a yes. Yes, we, we'll build that into a motion. Thank you, Chair. So it will be a video, uh, aim to get a video done. Yes, please. Okay. Th thank you, Chair. We will officers will make contact with the applicant if they are willing, because it agrees uh, if they're happy for us to enter the site and take video footage of the site and the operation. Uh, then we will aim to bring this back to the to the next development control meeting in six weeks' time. If for some reason that um, we're unable to do that, we will certainly advise members at that particular time. Um, uh, uh, Rodri, I don't know if you want any more comments on 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 that course of action. Uh, no, John. That was short and sweet, Rod. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank thank you very much, members and chair. Thank Jay, you, Jonathan. Jay, sorry, can I can I keep on coming in for a second? Obviously, yes. that includes that item. Uh, item seven, isn't it? But the next item, item eight. So, sorry, Chair and Rod, can I just interrupt on that? That with the video, might I suggest that the, whoever does the video does not go alone? That there is a witness to the video? Witness. Maybe somebody from the committee or another officer. I don't know. There, there, there definitely be more than one officer visiting, and um, yeah. I, I think that will be appropriate. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Sorry, Chair, I, I do want to um, jump jump into the next business, uh, I, I, but I think that concludes item seven. Right, so we're going to move on now to item eight. Yes, and the point I was going to raise, and I can see Andrew's poised to bring back uh, speakers, but there's, uh, in fact, four speakers on item eight, I think. But item eight is, of course, on the same site as we've been debating for the last... Uh, one in two hours. Yeah, uh, roughly. And um, if we're going to have, if we're able to have a video of the site, uh, clearly I would have thought it should be including the site, which is the subject of the item eight application. I, I would to totally concur with so, what you're saying, Rod. So what it, it occurs to me that it might, it, it does not seem sensible to try and deal with this item without you know without the site visit the video site visit um, and i i just suggest to committee and uh, possibly to the speakers that is it really a point in them speaking now because surely we should do the same motion for this one as we've just done for item seven i would suggest 
I, I totally agree. John Paul? Yeah, it was just to say, yeah, I, I hope I agree completely there with Rod's assessment. I think if it needs officially moving, I'll move it that we defer that to to go with the set next item. OK, Councillor Webster, you did initially. I'll, yeah, I'll, I, I'll second um, Councillor Brindle's um, motion that we move that to, to ne ne um, next time. Well, everybody in favour of that? Agreed, agreed. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. No, right, OK. Yes, Rod, I think everybody's there. Jonathan, did you hear that now? Um, yes, thank you, Chair. I think that uh, that does make sense. Yeah. Yeah. So we so can make a decision on it then, right, Rod? Yeah, I think I think that's been moved and seconded. We needed that as a formal separate motion. So I'm grateful to members. Uh, perhaps we clearly the speakers uh, can come back. Hopefully, if this comes back next time in March, I think the speakers can come back at that time, chair, and um, and yeah. give give their presentations. Yeah, Rodri. Did you want to say anything? Uh, yeah, I'm just saying that there's no actual uh, operations going on on this particular site at the minute. So because it's mm. not in their control and uh, basically there's no extra wood being dumped on the site and there's no processing of wood going on on the site. So so it will be uh, moving video of of the photographs effectively. So still photographs. So. So I, I don't know, um, it probably does make sense to deal with them both together, um, but the video won't show much more than the photographs. That's what I'm trying to say. Well, well Rod, it didn't in my stake, did it? It just gives us an, an overview of the site and then it went into the building, didn't it? And we looked at it, but we could see the, on the presentation that the company gave us was first yeah. class and, and it, you, you know, it was straightforward then. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying to members. I, I think it's, it's the right way forward. So I, we, I'm... I'm Sorry, Chair, go on. No, no, sorry, Jonathan, go on. Yeah, I, I, I fully agree with you, Chair. I think it, I think it is, and I'm sure that the, the, the applicant and the company that um, wish to make progress on that, they, they will be happy to accommodate us in this, in this respect. So, thank you, Chair. Rod? So I think, I think that's, well, that's been moved and I think agreed by committee uh, now. It has. It has. And so perhaps Andrew uh, can advise the, uh, the speaker because the chair needs to come back now because he's allowed back in to take item nine. Oh Rod <laughs> don't spoil it now we're going so good. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but uh, perhaps Andrew can perhaps we can have a brief pause uh, chair while Andrew uh, sorts yeah. out. Uh, that's right but, chair I'll, I'll now um, call. Can we have uh, a five minute break while, while will we do back. that? I'll now call Council If somebody Thomas. wants to go to the tea bar then or whatever they can. It's a five minute break. All right Thank Rod. You, chair. Thank you chair. Andrew, OK with that five minutes? Yes, that's fine. I, I'm calling Councillor Thomas back in now. That's, OK, that's, that's fine. Right. Thank, thank, thank you. you. I'm just going to go to the T-bar. <sighs> Phil, you've been hanging on for a bit, haven't you? <laughs> I've enjoyed, John. I felt Rod I felt Rodri's pain. I'm glad I passed that side to it. <laughs> well, it could always come back in on it. No, um, no, Phil. no, 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 no. Yeah, we, we've got eight, <laughs> six weeks now. Six weeks. 